All right, guys, welcome back to Sawing with Sandy. I'm inside today, hopefully not for long, to take some time to take you through two Coyote compact utility tractor models that I looked at and maybe you guys are looking at on your quest to get the perfect tractor for your property. Now, the two models I'm going to compare today are the DK4210 SE hydrostatic transmission cab model, and the other one is also a Coyote brand new CK4010 SE hydrostatic transmission cab model. I'm going to compare those two because they are relatively similar in a lot of capacities, but they have their small differences. For many of you, you're going to be comparing those two, going out to the dealerships, trying them out, and ultimately it's going to come down to some key features that makes you decide one way or the other. Without further ado, I'm going to take you to the spreadsheet I made. This will be available down in the description below. Make sure you click that link so you can check it out. And Let's go. All right, guys, here's the spreadsheet I just mentioned a moment ago. What you're going to see here is a comparison between two tractors. You can see in this column the DK4210 SE, the HST model with the cab, and the similar CK4010 SE hydrostatic transmission cab tractor in the right column. These two columns I'm going to compare in just a moment, but before I get there, I want to show you the location where I got a lot of the information from. This is the Coyote website, coyote.com. You've probably been here before if you're comparing these two models of tractor, but there's a really unique feature on this website that I think you guys want to check out. Up at the very top here, under the word compare tractors, left click. Now you're going to see all the models that Coyote makes that you can compare against one another. What you can do very easily is scroll down to the tractors you're interested in. In my case, here's the CK4010, the SCHST. If you click left click on this, it will add it, and then you can add the second tractor to compare it to. My second tractor I'm comparing it to, 210 SE HST cab. I just left clicked on that. Now they've both been added to a comparison spreadsheet. And if I click on start comparing on the bottom, it's going to raise up that spread. What you guys can see is the two tractors on the left and right. Now this is great and it really, really helps you uh, sort of get an overall view of what's what's the same and what's different. But what I'm going to do that's different today is I'm going to highlight some things that I think are significant enough that you should be looking at it as uh, maybe a deciding factor in purchasing the DK versus the CK. So first things first, both engines are identical in terms of horsepower, 39.6 horsepower. So you're not going to get a huge uh, a huge jump in, in oomph in the DK series, it's exactly the same as a CK. Where you're going to start to see a difference is the fuel tank capacity. The DK4210, you're at 12.7 gallons, whereas the CK4010, you're at 9 gallons. That's a 3.7 gallon difference, or 14 liters. So that's, you know, that's significant enough. Moving down here to the transmission, both models, the DK and the CK, both have hydrostatic transmission options. That's the one I selected because that's the one I'm most familiar with and that's the one I own. In those transmissions, there are three ranges, low, medium, and high. Where you're gonna to start to see a slight difference is right here. In the overall top speed, the DK series goes a little bit faster at 18 and a half miles an hour, whereas the CK series is going a little bit slower at 15.4 miles per hour. Is that important to you? Well, in my, opi in my opinion, in my case, I would say no. I don't drive on the road with my tractor. I've only been in high gear once, and that was just to make sure it worked. If you're traveling from field to field or property to property, then maybe you want something that goes faster. That's up to you. Moving down to the PTO here, this is where I found one of the first surprising differences that I want to point out to you, and I've highlighted in red. The PTO power is different than the engine horsepower. I'm sure you know that. You're looking at tractors. The PTO power on the DK4210, it has a horsepower rating of 29.1. That's quite a drop, right? That's, that's give or take about 9 or 10 horsepower from the engine horsepower. The CK4010 SE HST cab has a PTO power rating of 33.3 horsepower. So when we look at a difference here, that's a difference of, you know, give or take about four horsepower. So, um, you know, that's something for you guys to think about. 
Is that four horsepower going to be something that you need to run your implements? If it is, well, take that into consideration. Looking at the brakes and clutch, nothing to mention there. They are both identical. Okay, so I don't uh, I don't have anything pointed out, highlighted in red. In terms of your dimensions, I mentioned this earlier, your DK4210 SE, the hydrostatic cab model, it is bigger. It's physically larger. And so whether that makes a difference to you is probably going to help sway your decision. If you want to park your tractor in a garage, you're probably not going to be looking at a DK series unless you have a big shop. CK series, well, let's have a look at the overall height. Height from the top of the cab. 91.7. Okay, 91.7. Uh, you're getting pretty close to eight and a half feet. Uh, excuse me, seven and a half feet. So is that gonna is that gonna uh, be enough for you to get under your your uh, garage door? Maybe. 93 inches. Oh boy, that's getting real close, right? To be honest with you, garage doors you might be you might be stressed to get in there with with either. But uh, either way, they're fairly similar. Um, for their height, but other dimensions, they're not necessarily similar. Let's have a look at some of those. So if we have a look at the overall length, one is about six inches longer than the other. You know, not that big of a difference, but maybe you have a trailer to haul it on and that does make a difference. The width, check this out, 54.5 versus 62. Okay, so you're looking at give or take eight, nine, 10 inches wider. So that's, you know, that's pretty significant. Minimum turning radius, pretty well identical. The rear tread, I'm not going to get into that because that's nearly identical as well. But overall, the way you can think of it, the DK is a little bit bigger. Where we start to see some more significant differences is in the hydraulic system. The DK4210 has a hydraulic system of 16.49 gallons per minute. That's in comparison to the CK4010 at 11.3 gallons per minute. That's a difference of 5.9 gallons per minute. So if you're running some sort of implement that uses hydraulic pressure, you might want to consider that, especially if that implement use or requires a minimum amount of uh, gallons per minute. You want to make sure it falls within what the tractor can offer. Getting down to the three-point hitch, we start to see another significant difference. The DK4210 SE. Has a lift capacity, 24 inches, so the standard measure, of 2,600 pounds and change. Comparing that to the CK4010, the same lift capacity at the three-point hitch is about 1,000 pounds less. That's 1,000 pounds of weight you cannot lift up with your, with your uh, three-point hitch. Considering what you have at home and what you're going to use for rear-mounted implements, this will probably sway you in one direction or another. Overall weight. I said already that the DK series is bigger, physically bigger. Well, that includes its weight. The weight with agricultural tires and the cab is just over 4,000 pounds. In comparison, the CK4010 with the same cab is about 646 pounds lighter. 646 pounds, well, that might be significant to you, especially if you're doing a lot of pulling. So maybe you're, you're uh, pulling implements, uh, maybe you're working the ground or, or something similar, and you want to have that weight in that tractor to really put some oomph down to the implement. So maybe that'll be a consideration for you here. Moving out of the specs a little bit, let's look at uh, some of the standard equipment. And I highlighted in red some things that are found in one particular model of tractor and not the other. Remember, standard equipment, this comes with the tractor, you don't have to add it as an option. So the DK40 series is on the left, the CK40 series is here on the right. The DK4210 series, check it out, rear external three-point control lever. I have this on my tractor and I love it, I would hate to go without it. When I back up to an implement to hook up my three-point hitch, I try my best to line it up perfectly, but let's be honest, if I didn't have that rear control lever outside the cab, I'd be jumping back into the seat of the tractor quite often to reposition. So having this external lever is definitely a great standard feature on the DK series. 
If we look at the CK series, it has quite a bit of standard equipment that doesn't come standard on the DK series. And I'm going to show you what some of those are. Flip up PTO cover, rear work light, rear window wiper, dual armrest, cruise control, link pedal, telescopic lower link, telescopic stabilizers, dual remote valve, so four port, four port rear valves. All those things add up. Those are all standard. It doesn't mean you can't get it on your DK series, but what it means is it might have to be added to the DK series as an option. Some additional things. I think I, oh, I actually did mention them all. Let's look at optional items here. So here's some optional items for your DK series tractor that uh, is not an option on the CK series. And that one thing is a three point socket, excuse me, three pin socket. In comparison, the CK series, what they offer as optional equipment that is not offered as optional equipment in the DK series is the detent holder kit, rear view mirror kit, the right hand leveling box, and four wheel drive shaft cover. Okay, so. Many of these things, although they may be standard with one particular model, it may end up being an option on another model. Overall, what you're going to see here between the two models is that the CK series comes with more standard features than the DK series. The DK series often has those features available, but they're going to have to be added as optional equipment. Heading down to the instrument panel, if you have a look here, they are identical. The instrument panel on both models, the DK and the CK, they both have the same features. Nothing different here. Where we start to see a little bit of difference comes back to the physical size difference. Now, I highlighted here the physical size difference in the tires. What I have on my tractor and what many of you are likely going to have are industrial tires. I'm going to zoom out just a little, or maybe we'll just scroll over just a little. Industrial is listed here at the bottom, and you can see the DK4210 series has larger front and larger rear tires as compared with the CK series tractor. How much bigger? Well, let's look at this. The front track, the front tire, excuse me, for the DK series is at 30.8 inches. Whereas the front tires on the CK series are at 26.7 inches. So you're at about a 4 inch difference. That's diameter. So that means overall you're about two, you're sitting about 2 inches uh, on 2 inches of more tire with the DK. The width, the DK, you're at almost 11 inches wide. Whereas the CK, you're at 9 inches wide. So an inch on each side, right? Inch on each side of your, uh, your rim. Rear tires, rear tires of the DK series are at 48.1 inches of diameter as compared with the CK series, which is at 39.9 inches. That's a pretty big difference. So that's where we're starting to see some big differences. 48 compared with, uh, give or take 40, you're at about an eight inch difference. So you're gonna be about four inches higher, sitting on four inches more tire in the rear. If we look at the width, the rear tires of the DK series, just over 15 inches wide, whereas the diameter, excuse me, the width of the CK series is right on 15 inches wide. So the width is similar, but the diameter is obviously different. Let's look at what comes on the front of these guys, because many of you are looking at buying a compact utility tractor because they're great utility tools. The front end loaders. The DK4210 series, it has the option of getting the front end loader model KL5521. This is in comparison to the CK4010 series, which has two potential loader options. The loader options for the CK series, you have KL4020 or the KL4030. What I did was I looked at all the numbers and I tried to identify any big differences between the two that maybe you should know about so that you don't overlook it in your purchasing. One of the big differences I started to notice was right here when we got down to digging depth below grade. 
The DK series tractor with its front end loader, it's going to be able to dig down below grade 8.6 inches. In comparison, the CK series tractor with either of the two loader options is only going to dig down just right around 5 inches. So, you got a, you know, you got a decent number of inches difference there if you're going to be uh requiring to do, you know, some some light uh, excavation work. And when I mean excavation, I mean a few inches of excavation, maybe taking stone off a driveway, then uh, maybe you'll have these, have these numbers close at hand so you, uh, you remember them. Now, some other differences I noticed here came down to the lift capacity to full height at the pivot points. Now, remember, this first column is the DK tractor. The other two are the CK tractor. The lift capacity to full height, 2,474 pounds for the DK. In comparison, when looking at the CK series, you're going to max out right around the 1,900 pound mark. You know, give or take, you're at about 500 pound difference lift capacity to full height. Breakout force at the pivot points. Breakout force for that DK series, you're almost at 3,900 pounds. In comparison, the CK you're floating around 3,500 pounds, give or take 400 pound difference. Finally, the bucket rollback force at the ground line. Now, that force is going to be 3,100 and change pounds in the DK series, whereas the CK series in the 4030 loader model, you're at around 1,700 pounds. That's a pretty significant difference. Okay, so if, if uh, if that's something that's very important to you, if that, that particular motion is important to your operation or whatever you're going to be using the tractor for, take that into consideration. That's a big difference. As for the loader, the 4020 model, the KL 4020 on the CK model, I couldn't find the spec for that particular, for that particular uh, bucket rollback force. So uh, if you find it, let me know. Some more important information dealing with your front end loaders. So the DK series found here, we end up having a rated flow of 9.62 gallons per minute. As comparison, right around 7 gallons per minute is the CK series loaders. And one of the biggest deciding factors you need to make is bucket size. You can get a 66 inch bucket size in all of these, in both of these tractors, CK and DK. The CK, you can jump down to a 60 inch. The DK, you can jump up to a 72 inch. If you need that extra width, if you need 72 inches, that's going to be your deciding factor. DK all the way. If it doesn't matter to you and you can get away with a smaller one, well, then the CK comes back into play. Bucket capacity. If we're talking, <clears throat> if we're talking apples to apples, we're talking 66 inch buckets for both tractors. You're at 14.5 cubic feet for the DK, whereas in comparison, you're at about 10.10 .10 cubic feet in the CK. Approximate weight. So we're just talking the front end loaders here. Approximate weight with the DK model 1,389 pounds for that loader. That's with a 72 inch bucket. If we compare apples to apples again, you're only about 28 pounds or excuse me, uh, yeah, 28 pounds lighter with the 66 inch bucket. Compare that to the 66 inch bucket on the CK model, you're at just under a thousand pounds. So there you're give or take 350 pounds lighter, even more, maybe 400 pounds lighter with the uh, CK model bucket. Now, both of these tractors, the DK4210 as well as the CK4010, have the option to have a backhoe attachment from Coyote. I looked at the spec between both models that are available, and the main difference I saw came down to the bucket digging force. The bucket digging force with the DK series tractor, which has the backhoe model KB2485, the bucket digging force is 3,700 pounds and change. In comparison, you're right around a thousand pounds less in terms of digging force with the CK4010 series uh, backhoe, which is called the model KB2475 
L. Thousand pounds less, give or take. That's uh, that you know significant. So think about that if you're you're going to be using a backhoe quite a bit for uh, for your work around your place. Overall, the stats are here. This is going to be in the description below for you guys to check out. If it were coming down to it for me, I want a tractor that has weight. I find a lot of people have to add weight to their tractor in order to utilize their loader to the full capacity. And so for me, I'm not too concerned about the horsepower as much as I'm concerned about the overall weight. I'm also concerned about the flow rate for the hydraulic system. From time to time, I want to use implements that require a slightly higher than normal flow rate, and I want that ability in my tractor to power them. Lastly, when I'm looking at buying one of these two tractors, it is important to recognize when I'm going to have to pay extra for equipment that I need. The CK series comes fully decked. All kinds, of, all kinds of extras as standard equipment. The DK series, just keep in mind, some of those little bits and pieces that you may want may not come as standard equipment, so make sure you have that included when you're pricing out your tractor so you don't get surprised with some optional equipment pricing after you get the initial quote. Other than that, it's up to you what your decision's gonna be. I know what my decision was going to be. I tried both tractors out, and uh, ultimately I ended up buying pre-owned, but I ended up buying a DK series tractor because I liked the size, I liked the weight of it, and I liked the, capa the uh, capabilities of it for what I do. And if you wanted to see exactly what I've done with my tractor, including all the log work, the chipping, the snow blowing and rock moving and all that sort of thing, be sure to check out my playlist. That I'll have at the end of this video. That's going to do it for me here today. I appreciate all people out there sharing their feedback with me, especially those people who have one of these two models. I'm interested to hear how things have gone with it. Other than that, I hope to see everyone next time and be well out there, folks. See you then.